I had the chance to talk to a man who was in the front row as history unfolded before his eyes. In fact, he helped shape history. Stapleton Roy participated in those secret negotiations in 1978 that led to the formal establishment of diplomatic relations. I asked him what stands out to him over the 35 years that followed. Well, I think the most progress has been in developing the U.S.-China relationship. We were beginning from a very low level. Uh, trade was minuscule, and uh, exchanges between our two countries were literally just a handful a year. And now our two countries are engaged across the board. Uh, our trade is over $500 billion a year. Our highest level of trade with the Soviet Union uh, during the Cold War was less than one hundredth of our current trade with China. That's an enormous development. You know, Ambassador, uh, whenever you hit a milestone like this, it's easy to look back at the past uh, in the rearview mirror, kind of look back and see what's happened. But it's also a, a time to just kind of take a step forward and look at, uh, reflect on what can happen in the future. So as you look to the future between these two countries, what's needed uh, in terms of maintaining these ties and actually growing them? Well, I think in a sense the big challenges are ahead of us. Uh, China is much more powerful and significant than it was 35 years ago. And the United States still has the largest economy in the world and the uh, most powerful military. So managing this relationship poses enormous challenges for both of us and for all of the countries in East Asia and frankly in the rest of the world. I think at the moment we are focused on trying to stabilize and reverse the strategic rivalry between the two countries. We're each talking in fact, there's agreement between the two of us that we want to create a new model of relations between major powers that can prevent a rising power such as China and an established power such as the United States from ending up in conflict together. Uh, we're in agreement on that objective, but turning it into reality is going to require steady, strong leadership from the top and a gradual reversal of a trend toward growing competitive rivalry between the two countries. So what challenges uh, do you see for both countries and are their priorities the same? Priorities are not the same. We have some basic common interests, which is both of us believe that stability and peace in East Asia is the best way to advance our national interests. But China is a developing country. Uh, in absolute terms, it has the second largest economy in the world, but in per capita terms, it still ranks around 125. So that China has long-term goals. Uh, it wants to raise its per capita income to that of European countries by 2049. That's a dramatic goal, but it's a realizable one. But at the same time, China has to sustain economic growth. And as its economy becomes larger, it's not so easy to maintain the dramatic growth rates that it's been able to achieve over the last 35 years. The United States has the challenge of trying to get our political system functioning better and restoring the vitality of our economy. At the moment, the way our political and economic systems are functioning is almost an invitation for other countries to underestimate the United States. I think that would be extraordinarily dangerous because the United States has extraordinarily favorable conditions to remain a big, strong, powerful country. And I think countries who sell short the United States are going to be sorry they did so. Ambassador, one final question. Um, I'm a parent of two children, and, and when we talk about uh, growth and years passing, and I know you're probably a parent as well, at some point you look at your child and they're no longer a child, they're an adult, and the relationship shifts. You'll never stop being a parent. And I want to talk to you about the relationship between the United States and China, because initially um, the U.S. Was, had almost kind of a paternal kind of approach, or maybe it was teacher-student uh, relationship. The relationship has shifted. Do you, do you think the United States has shifted as well in terms of how they perceive the relationship? I think that essentially the future of the relationship between the United States and China has to be based on seeing each other as equals. Now, no two countries or no two people are exactly equal. So being equal can, doesn't mean that you are the same in every respect. But we cannot treat China as a pupil who should learn from us, and China should not treat us as a 
young upstart of a country because we lack China's 5,000 years of history. So I think mutual respect and understanding of the circumstances, geographic, historical, that shape the behavior of each country is vitally important to trying to keep our differing circumstances not interfering with the process of keeping a positive relation between our two countries. I think it's an achievable goal, but it's a big challenge. Ambassador, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for your time.